Greetings to you all. I'm sorry that I can't be with you in person, but I'm now in my 96th year. I'm sure we all share the same goals. Very simply, it's to create a world at peace where everyone, regardless of their race or creed, can live in peace and human dignity. The problem is, how do we go about doing that? How do we get from here, a world of chaos, torment, and murdering, to a more peaceful and humane world? There are three basic points in order to have a lawful and peaceful society. You must have laws which define what is permissible and impermissible. You must have courts to determine whether the laws have been violated or whether this is forum to settle disputes. And you must have a system of effective enforcement. Those three legs of the stool will provide a balanced international society. To the extent that you have them, you will have tranquility. To the extent that they're lacking, you have turmoil. We have come along a long way with developing the laws, thanks largely to Justice Jackson and the Nuremberg Principles. We have had courts, and he led a beautiful precedent at Nuremberg, which is now being celebrated 70 years ago. But on the enforcement leg, we have done practically nothing. So we are trying to balance this world on a two-legged stool. And what's happening? We're falling on our head, and we will continue to fall on our head until such time as we have recognized what is vitally essential for a more peaceful and tranquil world. There are certain fundamental principles we must respect. First, as was made clear at Nuremberg, particularly also by Justice Jackson, the law binds everyone equally. Crimes are committed by people, and they should be held accountable for what they do. In addition to that, we have to recognize that we are never going to have perfection. We have criminal laws which certainly deter crime. It doesn't stop all crime. But if you didn't have laws, it certainly would be much worse. So we must not be discouraged by the fact that the crimes will continue to some extent. The issue always is whether we can deter those crimes by the rule of law, and I think we can. We have not yet recognized that you cannot kill an ideology with a gun. A person who is ready to kill and die for his particular ideals, whether they be religious or nationalistic or economical, you cannot deter him by threatening death to him. You must have a change of heart and mind, and that will take a long time to do. But we have to work at it, and we have to begin at the earliest levels, kindergarten or earlier. We must bring in all of the techniques of learning, the churches, the synagogues, the schools, on every level, to teach people that law is not glorious, as we do today glorify war-making, but law is War-making is horrible. It's a terrible crime and should not be tolerated because we see the consequences of it. Millions of people die. Children killed by the thousands. I prosecuted Nazi criminals and convicted them of murdering over a million people, including hundreds of thousands of children, simply because they didn't share the race or the ideology or the religion of their executioners. Those purposes still guide people in killing innocent people today. And until you have taught the world that these are intolerable and they are as horrible things and not glorified things, you will not be able to find the peaceful world we all seek. All of my views are contained on my website. Everything is free. Copy it, plagiarize it, I don't care. No attribution is necessary. It spells out the need for what we have to do to have a more humane world. I see the problems. I know the difficulties. I did the closing statement in the Lubanga case. I was then 92 years old. My first experience, which was my first case in Nuremberg, I was 27. So we see the long time span it takes to move forward. I realize the enormous strides that we have made. We do have international criminal courts. Many of you here have been working as prosecutors in those courts. We do have binding obligations to respect humanity that was unheard of when I started in this 60 or 70 years ago. So I see all of those positive things, 
And I know that if we are persistent in doing what we all really feel in our heart is the right thing to do, we will get there. To spend, as we have already done, 70 years trying to define the basic term of aggression is an insult to the intelligence of people like you, who lawyers who have come together. Justice Jackson defined it. It was defined by the International Law Commission. It was defined in a subsequent consensus definition. Yet the excuse is still given today. Today, when the United States General Assembly in their first assembly said you have to set up a court, you have to set up a court of crimes, you have to define aggression, that was 75 years ago. And still today, they're quibbling about the definition. My friends, let's move on, ratify the definition, get it out of the way, move on to new ways. Let us recognize that war making, which Jackson condemned as a supreme international crime affirmed by the General Assembly, is punishable as a crime against humanity on its existing ICC provisions for other inhumane acts. Write it into your national legislation. Accept the principle of universal jurisdiction and you list the killing of innocent people in large numbers as a punishable international offense, no matter where the criminal is apprehended. Let him stand trial. You don't have to shoot him down like a dog. Let him stand trial and state his case, as we did with Goering, and then you sentence him. We have not yet done that. So I was a combat soldier for three years in World War II. I was awarded five battle stars for not having been killed in any of the major battles of the war. A few weeks ago, I was appointed by the French as a member of their Legion of Honor. The Harvard Law School gave me a medal. The last one who had received it was Nelson Mandela, who really honored me because I was in holy footsteps. So remembering all that, look at my web, have confidence in your future. I'm sure it will be better than our past. I wish you all the best of luck. Goodbye.